So they lower the cage. They do the blood and guts package. They give the rules. Smiley Roberts herniates himself on the introductions. Here comes the Jericho appreciators. Was that an homage to a clockwork orange? Where did the red outfits and the ridiculous hats come from? It came from the ridiculous mind of Chris Jericho, who seems to be blessed with the worst ideas anyone's ever thought of, and then he convinces other people who are susceptible to bad ideas to go along with them, and then usually after the fact they realize, why the fuck did I do this? But it, it looked a little clockwork orange-ish with the outfits. because I haven't seen that movie in 40 fucking years. Yeah, they like, were white, didn't they? No, I think it was orange. Maybe, I don't know. It was a clockwork but, orange, but the droogs well, were white. Well, a clockwork orange to me is like 2001 A Space Odyssey. I haven't seen either one of those movies in 40 years, and I tried to watch 2001 a couple of years ago and realized why I haven't seen it in 40 years, because that's the worst fucking movie it was ever made. And the soundtrack and the sound effects bothered Harley. She would actually get, a, every time that the spaceship noise would, she'd get up and walk out of the room and snort. So anyway, so it was six on six. I thought the war games, blood and guts supposed to be five on five, but somehow they got six in here, right? Because it was Jericho and Sammy Guevara and Garcia and Hager and Mac Daddy Daddy Mac and Cool Hand Luke against Moxley and Claudio Castagnoli and... What was it? What was his name? Y Yuli Wheeler? Yuli <laughs> Wheeler. And Santana and Ortiz and... I've missed one. Yuli Wheeler. Uh, Wheeler. I did it again. Wheeler, Yuta, Moxley, yeah. Claudio, Santana, Ortiz, Eddie Kingston. Kingston. So six on six. And they started it out, and obviously the original War Games rules, until everybody's in, you can't, nobody can win, and then the, the actual match beyond, as Dusty called it, starts. So Claudio starts with Sammy Guevara, and the first fucking move, bless him. They try to do the deal where Claudio was going to go through the ropes from one side of the, from one ring to the other, and Sammy was going to leap over, and Sammy leaped over and landed on Claudio's back and just and was up there for about five or six seconds, and Claudio just had to backdrop him. But Claudio opened this thing hot, and what a fucking talent. And the difference is visual. You can see it in just the way he carries himself and everything he does. It's not, it, there's no wasted motion. He's poised. He can move around. Claudio, and he's a real man. He's got size. He's strong as a bull. I like Sammy as a, as a heel. As We've talked about this from the time we first saw him. Great slappable face. Incredible attitude. It, we found out, obviously, that he's a blithering simpleton, and he's going to paralyze himself and have a, not nearly the career he could have if he stopped doing all this bullshit, but if he had somebody guiding him and he'd listen to him, he could be a red-hot fucking heel for a long period of time in this business. He has that guy, Chris Jericho. Oh, He's been guiding him and he listens to him and look at where he is today. Yeah, so they went to a break. And when they came back, um, old Wheeler got in and he did multiple German suplexes. So now every this was like the third match on this two-hour program where everybody grabs somebody by the waist and does six or seven German suplexes in a row. And then it, early in the match where everybody's got to withstand that and just go on. So they at least made this make sense as it, when the odds are even, the baby faces should be kicking ass. And when the heels have the advantage, the heel should be kicking the baby face's ass. So they pretty much stuck to that. It was at that point, it was Claudio and Sammy and Yuta and whoever. Here comes Hager. And he does a face off with Claudio. And that, that would be good, except Claudio's great. And Hager is the drizzling shits. And he has no face, no oomph. And his work is sloppy, yeah, but the they got the heels got the heat on the baby faces, 
And then here comes Moxley in with a chair. So now obviously the door is locked, but every, was it five minutes they were doing the time period? The door gets open, somebody gets to go in, so Moxley brings in a chair. He just can't help himself. He just cannot help himself. He thinks... You know what? What he does is wrestling. I completely agree with what you're saying right now, and it was around this point in time I said to myself, I bet you he's going to have thumbtacks. I knew it. I just knew it because oh, of, of the stupidity we see in all of his matches. I knew there would be thumbtacks. So I, I made the notes. Moxley does Moxley stuff. Garcia ends up bleeding. And then all of the Blackpool Combat Club guys get all the heels. And you know the thing they do where they sit the heels down and they, they're behind them and they're elbowing in the pocket of the neck where they can't possibly hurt anybody anyway so they could actually lay it in if they wanted to? If you laid it in, that's right. Yeah, well, go back. I dare anybody. I will give anybody that goes back and watches this and says that this is not the fakest bunch of shit you've ever seen on a fucking wrestling program, I will give you $500. Moxley, were they were not even good enough to be called fake elbows. He was just making the motion while the, the heel was sitting there in front of him, not even bothering to sell it because he wasn't touching him. And then Cool Hand Luke gets in, and because the baby faces are on top, he starts running away from everybody. And the next one in was Ortiz. And now he's got the panda bear makeup, which is from what movie is that from that everybody's told me? Dead now? Presidents. Dead Presidents. Well, he looks like a goddamn dead Puerto Rican. Because he's fucking... He's got a white face, black circles around his eyes, and now that they've shaved his head, he painted his head red. So he got his bald head painted red and he's wearing panda makeup and it looked ridiculous. And they go to another break and they come back and here comes Mac Daddy and now he brings a chair in and now the heels start getting their heat again but they show a VTR videotape replay by the way for folks wondering what that the VTR of during the break, Moxley dumped out a bag of broken glass. And even if it was gimmick sugar glass, people don't know that. So, <laughs> how fucking ignorant and stupid can a human being be? If I'm sitting there watching a television program, a wrestling match, and somebody dumps out a bunch of broken glass, I said, well, that is the stupidest thing I've ever seen, and that guy's a complete idiot. Because I know wrestling's a work, because they tell me constantly, but now they got broken glass in there that don't work with anybody, so now they're just idiots. And what is this? Is this the goddamn, the, the, the cock fight down the street? Are we going in a barn to watch chickens with razor blades on their fucking feet fight each other how unsavory can this be now they're rolling around in broken glass and then he pile drives one of the heels on the broken glass and he gets his juice that way of course that wasn't the finish because the match hasn't even really started yet you can't win it everybody's not in yet if moxley worked in a carnival he'd be the one asking to have the geek job Broken glass, and, and the thumbtacks are coming up. It makes wrestling and wrestlers look like the worst kind of trash, filth people. Stupid, ignorant, trash, filth people. Well, beyond and, that, even if you don't want to use that argument, we've seen it all too many times. The thumbtacks, I get you'll get an initial pop as soon as you open the mysterious black bag. No one knows what it is until we empty the thumbtacks. Everyone knows what it is, and they'll still pop when you empty the thumbtacks. And then it becomes a spot we've seen way too often to mean yeah. anything. Yeah, over and over, constantly. Stupid. And how you... And, and here's the thing. There's people in the match that have to fall and take bumps in this ring on these thumbtacks. And I don't know. Maybe things have changed now in today's modern wrestling. But I guarantee goddamn to you, if you'd have went in the locker room of WrestleMania 10 in Madison Square Garden or Starcade 86 in the Omni or Greensboro, and you said, I need 12 guys to go out and work in a ring filled with thumbtacks. Raise your hands. 
you wouldn't have got a goddamn soul because they'd be going, what, what? You said what? You want us to do what? How fucking stupid is that? So Moxley was bleeding and cool Luke was bleeding and Santana comes in with not only a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, but they handed a table in too. And at that point, I said, how many hats can this hat wear? The ultimate gimmick match. Two rings. A steel cage with a roof around both of them. No disqualification. No time limit. Though to win the match, your opponents have to be disc dis capacitated. So now we also need barbed wire baseball bats, thumbtacks, broken glass, tables, chairs, and also we're going to go up and fight on the top. So, but anyway, Santana got in, was in there for about a minute and a half, gave Garcia a rock bottom, a rock bottom, and his left knee buckled, and he went down selling, and we never saw him again. I think they took him out. I heard from people that were there that for at least a long time, if not the remainder of the match, he was kind of down on the ground talking, or at least down towards the uh, corner of the ring talking to the referees. Well, at least he had something to do to keep busy while everybody else was fucking themselves up. But now this guy's may be hurt, and for, he did a rock bottom. And that's the point. Shit can happen no matter what you're doing, even if it's safe shit or simple shit. And here these morons are diving off everything in sight and constantly having surgery, being operated on, being paralyzed, being fucking out of action, whatever the case. So then Moxley started stabbing a guy in the head with chopsticks. Chopsticks. He actually had them in his back pocket so he could stab the guy in the head with chopsticks. When's the last time you brought chopsticks as a weapon to a street fight, Brian? That's one weapon I haven't used. It's just they come up, they did this shit in the garbage match circuit where they think, what can we use that are common household objects that people know will hurt and we're really hurting ourselves, but it'll get a pop. One of these garbage promotions a couple years ago said they had a match with Legos in the ring because everybody knows how bad it hurts when you step on a Lego. So it's like children. Children in romper room are now providing the foreign objects for these goddamn badass wrestlers. So there was a nice close-up of Mac Daddy fake choking Moxley with the barbed wire bat. Mac Daddy had it near his throat, near Moxley's throat, and he was just sitting there listening because Moxley, while he was being choked, was talking to him, telling him what to fucking do. Nice close-up there. Then Jericho came in with another bat, another baseball bat, hit people with it twice, fake looking shots, and then somebody kicked him and he dropped it. And then finally, the last guy, it had to be the last guy because Kingston wanted to get a hold of Jericho, so they milked that till the end. Here come Kingston in with a kendo stick. And now everybody was in the ring everybody's already bleeding. They've got multiple foreign objects in the ring. They've got 23 minutes left on the air. And I'm thinking, what in the flying fuck? Kingston has a bottle of rubbing alcohol, but somehow did they got it away from him or he dropped it or whatever. It fell out of the ring. And then Ty Conti was trying to shove the bottle of rubbing alcohol back through the, the, cyclone fence cage but did you see it was just too big it wouldn't go through the the fucking link chain link but she managed to spring a leak in the side of the fucking bottle so as she's trying to shove it rubbing alcohol is shooting out toward the person i think it was jericho that she's trying to shove it into so chair sticks table rubbing alcohol they power bombed hager through the table and then Wheeler Useless dumps out 10,000 thumbtacks. And they peeled the canvas and the padding back on one of the rings. So one ring has thumbtacks in it. So if you've got a lick of sense, you ain't going to take a bump. And the other ring, half of the canvas and the padding is rolled up and the boards are exposed. So if you've got a lick of sense, you ain't going to take a bump. 
so now if if anybody does that somebody else besides santana is going to get hurt because it's all sloppy and crowded and filled with furniture and they go to another break <clears throat> and they come back and they got 15 minutes left on the air and the morons are taking bumps in thousands of thumbtacks and i just thought they did all this. They promoted this blood and guts and they're doing all this to themselves and they're hurting themselves. And the viewership, they went back from 700 and something thousand people to the million people that they started out with when punk came back fucking nine months ago and has been eroded away since then. This is the best. This is the best. They, they are pretty much literally setting each other on fire and disemboweling each other with sharp impl implements to get a million people to watch this show, which is what they get every time they hot shot. And in three weeks, they'll be back to 800,000. But what are they going to do? What would they have to promise or advertise to get a million and a half? We're going to televise a live public disemboweling. And somebody who picks the lucky number We'll get the fucking entrails delivered to him in a fucking box a week after the match. Jericho did the fire extinguisher spot. As another thing, that's not a heel spot. That's a babyface spot. Dip shit. I've told you this before a few weeks ago, the last time you did it. He just likes to hear people cheer for him. If a heel uses the fire extinguisher, the people pop on it and cheer and laugh because they like it. Because it's odd looking. And it makes a big fucking psh. That's why the baby face, as the last resort to get out from under the heel, is the one who finds and uses the fire extinguisher because that gets the people cheering and up and happy for the start of his comeback. Then Ty Conti tried to do something, and here came, I thought her name was Ruby Soho, but somebody called her Ruby Riot. I must have been dreaming. Taz accidentally said that. And uh, <laughs> also in the same match, Jim Ross kept calling Claudio Cesaro. So it was happening all over the place. Um, so Jericho then goes to the top of the cage and Kingston follows him and they fight on top. Glad to see they're doing something that's never been done before. Then Sammy goes to the top of the cage and all of this took forever. It was not transpiring quickly. Then Kingston throws Sammy off the top of the cage. Brian, did you freeze frame that long shot for a second? I did not. I watched it, though, because all of a sudden I'm like, what is that giant box? There you go. Down at ringside, because I did not see that there before. They had shot around this all night, but the people in the building couldn't have avoided seeing it. It was almost as big as the ring. At ringside, next to one of the two rings that they were doing this business in, was a giant, triple-sized, double-height, black sheet-covered table with nobody sitting at it. Just a, a production table, but completely empty, covered up with a sheet, three times the size and twice the height as normal. And when Kingston threw Sammy off the top, Sammy just takes the dead man fall and goes straight through that thing. It was a fucking airbag. Remember last year it was Jericho. Instead of blood and guts, they ought to called it cardboards and, and fucking airbags. That table, table, that structure, that apparatus was sitting there the whole night with the people in the building looking at it. And you had to know. Well, I mean, that unless the, the only way they could have made it more obvious is if they'd drawn a bullseye on top of the fucking thing. For comparison, when Chris Jericho last year, or whatever, two years ago, landed on the crash pad, it was nowhere near as egregious as this. No, because this was an obvious thing that had no purpose taken up an entire section of front of, that would have been the front few rows of ringside. There was no equipment there. There's nobody sitting at it. 
There was no function for this area otherwise than to catch a body falling from 25 feet in the air. And that's what it did. And a 20-foot bump was a break spot. They just said, well, Sammy's dead. We'll be right back. Match goes on. So they come back, and Kingston and Jericho are still on top of the cage. It's been three minutes during the break, and the rest of the match may still be going on down, down below. We don't know because it's being ignored. And then suddenly here comes Claudio climbs up to the top of the cage and saves Kingston. But Daddy Mac comes to the top of the cage. And Claudio finally grabs Jericho and gives him the big swing on the top. The people wanted to see the big swing. I did too. But the rest of this thing would not fucking end. Not end ever. At this point, I wrote, Ian Rotten should have promoted this match and paid the guys off in hot dogs and pain pills. <laughs> this is national television. There's mainstream name talent involved in this match. It's a big NBA building, and it looks like the worst combat zone wrestling horse shit that you would ever see on fucking Twitter. Insulting the wrestling business, insulting the people that took the time to be talented in it, and that just because the booker is a mark that likes chaos... The owner, I should say, is a booker. That or the, the owner likes chaos as a mark. They have to give it to him. No matter whether it does anything for the business's public relations or not. So anyway, finally on the top of the cage, Daddy Mac tapped out to Claudio because Kingston had Jericho and Claudio had Daddy Mac. And Daddy Mac tapped out and Kingston was mad because he thought that he had got Jericho to tap out. And all I can say is thank fuck that Brian Danielson wasn't in this. Not only might he have gotten further injured, but it just would have been an insult to a guy of talent like that to be involved in shit that any fucking garbage goof that works full-time at a Valvoline station could fucking do on an indie show. So then, explain this to me. I think I know the reason. Every one of the babyface team then climbs to the top of the cage to celebrate the victory. Moxley could barely make it. Claudio had to drag him up. And Jericho was still laying there. And all of his hated enemies, including Kingston, were just sitting there looking at him five, six feet away, ignoring him. And then Jericho and Daddy Mac kind of crawl over to the edge of the cage to give the Baby faces room to lift their hands. But still, there was all the baby faces just like taking a curtain call. Okay, the, the play is over now. Thank you guys for coming. We've had a wonderful time. And there's the fucking guy that started this whole thing that they wanted to tear limb from limb. Ten feet away from him on the top of the cage, they don't even touch him or look at him. You know why? I guarantee I know why. Chris Jericho got up there and figured out he couldn't climb back down. That's the only explanation. Any fucking heel would have got out of there if he could when he saw that he was trapped with the baby faces. Any baby face, I think Kingston actually did. It looked like he talked to him once. But any baby face would have gone, get the fuck out of here so we don't have to throw you off the cage too. But he, he just laid there. I guarantee you, Jericho realized at that moment that he couldn't climb off that cage without killing himself. Why else wouldn't he leave? I don't know. I think that's the only reason anyone could come up with. So this was... <laughs> Maybe he was afraid to go down because Santana was still down there. The guy with one leg. I think I'd be scared of being up on a 25-foot fucking cage with five guys than on the floor with one guy with a bad leg. By the way, is this a crutch for Jericho? This is the second straight blood and guts match Jericho climbs to the top of the cage. Well, yeah, because that way all the attention can be on him. He can get all the spotlight and everybody else working hard in the match can be forgotten about. Two blood and guts matches, two people that go off the top of the roof of the cage. So now we should just expect it, I guess. Yeah, well, it's, it's a thing that they do now. But, uh, again, free television, fucking, it, 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 
an hour worth of this stuff. No War Games match ever went an hour. Ever. For the same reason, because people would get sick and tired of seeing this chaos and it becomes unbelievable. And the War Games matches, they weren't allowed to bring in any inanimate object that they so desired because they were already in a gimmick match. They didn't need to gimmick it. But, the, you know, the, it's embarrassing that people think when they, when anybody that happens to be flipping by, as they say, civilians, outsiders, mainstream folks, people not in the wrestling bubble, it's embarrassing to me that they think that this is what wrestling is. And they watch this and they go, well, pfft, we don't want to have our kids watching this shit or we don't want to watch this shit or look at how stupid those guys are. They're all a bunch of drug addicts and morons. And you watch this program, you do not get any alternate viewpoint. You don't get the, God, look at the talent that Brian Danielson, the athletic ability he's showing. Or look at the verbal capacity of a CM Punk or what you get a bunch of guys fake fighting and barbed wire and thumbtacks and it's the most unsavory disgusting bunch of bullshit that I can imagine why anybody would want people to think about wrestling like this I can't I can't get it and that's my thoughts on blood and guts I love the blood and I even love the guts if people can believe that the two guys are actively trying to separate each other from their blood and guts. But when it's a fucking mud show, phony looking, obviously fake, contrived, stupid, nonsensical, illogical bunch of mayhem, makes everybody in our business look like a goddamn idiot. And that's all I got to say about it. All right, well, that was AEW Blood and Guts.